the Draconis would soon be extinct. Every race in the Galactic Council sneered as they shunned their desperate pleas for aid against the Void Swarm's merciless onslaught. Every race, except one. The humans. James Allen strode into the immense council chamber on Nexus Prime, the murmurs of a hundred alien tongues washing over him. Insectoid Kilthir clicked their mandibles, crystalline Vornax glittered under the lights. At the center podium, the reptilian Draconis delegation trembled with rage and dread. High Priest Primus slammed a clawed fist on the lectern. The Void Swarm has already devoured three colony worlds. It now hurtles toward Draconis Prime, an all-consuming darkness that will feast on our billions. The council members shifted in their seats. A willowy Imari councillor spoke, her melodic voice edged with ice. We cannot spare our forces for a foe we don't understand. This is your war, not ours. James watched appalled as the votes tallied. The Council had abandoned the Draconis to extinction. Primus slumped, his scales ashen grey. Devastated, the delegation trudged from the chamber as the councillors looked away. James ran to catch the High Priest outside the doors. He gripped Primus's shoulder. Earth will not desert you in your darkest hour. No matter the cost, humanity will stand with the Draconis against the Void Swarm. This I vow. Primus' eyes glimmered with the tiniest ember of hope. Earth's technology lagged far behind the Council races. If the humans joined this fight, it could mean their own demise. The Void Swarm had to be stopped here, or it would surge onward to devour world after world, humanity included. The stakes could not be higher. The survival of the Draconis, the humans, and the entire galaxy hung by a fraying thread. Failure was not an option. James burst into the United Earth Council chamber, his heart pounding. Every seat was filled, a sea of stern faces illuminated by the hollow screens flickering with data. At the center podium, Secretary Alvarez regarded James with a raised eyebrow. Ambassador Allen, I trust you have good reason for this unscheduled interruption. James took a deep breath. The words poured out of him, urgent and unfiltered. He described the Void Swarm's unstoppable advance, the worlds already lost, the Draconis' desperate plea for aid at the Galactic Council callously rejected. We can't abandon them to extinction. What does it say about us as a species if we let an entire civilization die when we could have helped? After everything we've been through, all the wars and suffering, we finally have a chance to be a force for good in the galaxy. Councilwoman Nguyen frowned. You're asking us to involve Earth in an interstellar war we know nothing about. We're still rebuilding from our own conflicts. The loss of ships and personnel could set us back decades. Shouts of agreement echoed through the chamber. James slammed his fist on the lectern, his voice rising over the din. This is bigger than just us. If the Void Swarm isn't stopped at Draconis Prime, how long until it reaches Earth? We'd be fighting them alone. And even if we're spared, what does it say about our principles if we just watch them die? Everything we've done, all our progress, it means nothing if we turn our backs on others in need. Silence fell. James saw doubt melt into grim resolve on the councillors' faces. Secretary Alvarez straightened, meeting James's gaze. We will put it to a vote, all in favor of sending a fleet to aid the Draconis. One by one, hands rose. It was unanimous. James sagged with relief, barely registering Alvarez's next words. Ambassador Allen, you will serve as lead diplomat on this mission. Report to Admiral Briggs for departure and Godspeed. The launch bay buzzed with activity as James strode across the tarmac. Mechanics swarmed over the gleaming ships, running final checks. Admiral Briggs emerged from the command shuttle, his weathered face grim. Alan, I won't mince words. We're heading into the unknown against a threat we barely comprehend. There's no guarantee any of us will make it back. James met Briggs' piercing stare. I know the risks, Admiral, but we're doing the right thing. We have to try. Briggs grunted. I hope you're right for all our sakes. He clapped James on the shoulder before heading back inside. James stood on the observation deck as the fleet rose through the atmosphere. 
Earth shrank beneath them, blue and green and achingly beautiful. His stomach churned with nerves, but beneath it a flicker of hope. They were on their way. Humanity was taking its first step into a larger universe, not as conquerors but as defenders. The weight of an entire species' survival pressed down on him, but James straightened his shoulders, ready to bear it. The stars beckoned and the fleet chased the light. The human fleet dropped out of hyperspace, the swirling vortex collapsing behind them as Draconis Prime loomed ahead. James stood on the bridge of the command ship, jaw set as he took in the planet's mottled green surface, marred by angry red scars where the void swarm had already struck. As they entered orbit, a hail from the surface crackled over the comms. High Priest Primus's face resolved on the viewscreen, his scales dull with exhaustion. Ambassador Allen, your arrival brings us hope in our darkest hour. James inclined his head. We're here to help in any way we can, High Priest. My people are at your disposal. Primus's relief was palpable, even through the screen. Come down to the surface, we have much to discuss. The human delegation touched down outside the Draconis capital, a once grand city, now fortified with hastily erected barriers and thrumming with nervous energy. Primus greeted them at the landing pad, flanked by a contingent of battle-scarred warriors. As they walked through the war-torn streets, James couldn't help but notice the wary glances the Draconi soldiers cast their way. He couldn't blame them for their scepticism. After all, the rest of the galaxy had abandoned them to their fate. In the war room, James huddled with Primus and the Draconis generals, poring over hollow maps of the planet's defences. The more he learned about the Void Swarm, the greater the pit of dread grew in his stomach. They adapt, Primus said grimly. Every tactic we employ, every weakness we exploit, they learn and evolve to counter it. It's like fighting a single malevolent intelligence. James frowned. A hive mind? Primus nodded. We believe so which makes them all the more dangerous. As the days passed and the human and Draconis forces worked to shore up the planet's defences, James couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the Council's refusal to help than mere indifference. The pieces just didn't fit. His suspicions were confirmed when a sleek silver ship bearing the Council's emblem landed without warning at the capital spaceport. James and Admiral Briggs were summoned to an emergency meeting where they found themselves face to face with a tall, slender alien with piercing violet eyes. I am Zorel, the envoy said, his voice smooth as silk. I come bearing a message from the Galactic Council. James crossed his arms. I thought the Council wanted nothing to do with this conflict. Zorel smiled thinly. Circumstances have changed, Ambassador Allen. The Council has been monitoring the Void Swarm for some time, and we have reason to believe they are not acting alone. Briggs leaned forward. What do you mean? We believe the Swarm is being controlled by the Kilith, an ancient race that once ruled the galaxy. They vanished eons ago, but it seems they may have returned to reclaim their former dominance. James felt a chill run down his spine. Why tell us this now? Zorel's gaze hardened. Because, Ambassador, the Council will not tolerate any interference in what we consider an internal galactic matter, you and your fleet are to withdraw immediately. James slammed his hand on the table. We can't abandon the Draconis. We gave our word. Then you doom not only them, but your own people as well, Zorel hissed. The Council has the power to make your lives very difficult, Ambassador. Think carefully about your next move. With that, the envoy swept from the room, leaving James and Briggs in stunned silence. Briggs ran a hand over his face. What do we do now? James set his jaw. We keep fighting. We didn't come all this way to turn tail and run. But even as he said the words, James knew their task had just become infinitely harder. They now faced not only the void swarm, but potentially the full might of the Galactic Council as well. The fate of the Draconis and perhaps the galaxy itself hung in the balance. James could only pray they were up to the challenge. The sky over Draconis Prime turned black as the void swarm descended, 
a churning mass of jagged metal and pulsing energy. On the surface, James stood beside Primus in the command center, his face bathed in the sickly glow of the hollow screens. They're coming in fast, James said, his voice tight. Admiral Briggs, what's your status? The Admiral's face appeared on the screen, grim and determined. We're in position, Ambassador, ready to engage on your command. James nodded. Give them hell, Admiral. The human fleet tore into the swarm, their weapons cutting swathes of destruction through the seething mass. But for every ship they destroyed, two more seemed to take its place, the swarm adapting and evolving before their eyes. On the ground, the Draconis forces fought with the fury of a cornered animal, their claws and teeth ripping into the swarm's grotesque foot soldiers. James and Primus coordinated the defense, dispatching reinforcements to the front lines and shoring up the city's failing shields. For a moment it seemed as though they might turn the tide. The human fleet was holding its own, and the Draconis were slowly pushing the swarm back from the city walls. James allowed himself a flicker of hope. And then the council fleet arrived. They dropped out of hyperspace like avenging angels, their ships sleek and deadly. At their head was Zorel's flagship, a needle of silver that glinted in the light of the burning city. Ambassador Allen, Zorel's voice crackled over the comms, dripping with disdain, you have defied the council for the last time. Surrender now or face the consequences. James gripped the edge of the console, his knuckles white. He looked to Primus, saw the despair in the High Priest's eyes. They both knew they couldn't fight a war on two fronts. But then James remembered the zero-point weapons, the experimental technology that Earth had been developing in secret. It was untested, highly unstable, but it might be their only chance. He opened a channel to Admiral Briggs. Admiral, I have an idea, but it's risky. Briggs' face was etched with weariness, but his eyes were steel. At this point, I'm open to anything. James laid out his plan, watching as Briggs' expression shifted from skepticism to grim understanding. Here it's a one-way trip, Briggs said quietly. Whoever leads that mission, this, they're not coming back. James swallowed hard. I know, I'll do it. But Briggs was already shaking his head. No, the Draconis need you here, coordinating the defense. This is a job for a soldier, not a diplomat. He straightened his shoulders. I'll lead the attack. James wanted to argue, but he knew Briggs was right. He clasped the Admiral's hand, feeling the weight of unspoken words between them. Godspeed, Admiral. As Briggs's fleet peeled away, streaking towards the heart of the swarm, James turned to Primus. We need to buy them time. Can your forces hold the council at bay? Primus bared his teeth in a fierce grin. We will fight to our last breath. What followed was a battle unlike any the galaxy had ever seen. The Draconis threw themselves at the council fleet with reckless abandon, their ships swarming Zorl's flagship like angry hornets. In the heart of the swarm, Briggs and his team fought their way to the center, planting the zero-point charges with grim efficiency. And then in a blinding flash of light it was over. The singularity tore through the swarm, ripping it apart from the inside out. The void ships crumpled like tin cans, their dying screams echoing across the battlefield. But the victory had come at a terrible price. Briggs and his fleet were gone, consumed by the very singularity they had created. The surviving human ships limped back to the surface, their hulls scorched and battered. In the aftermath, a stunned Zorel agreed to a truce, his arrogance shattered by the magnitude of the human sacrifice. James stood amidst the ruins of the Draconis capital, numb with grief and exhaustion. Primus laid a clawed hand on his shoulder. Your people have given us a future, the high priest said softly. We will never forget what you have done here. James nodded, too choked with emotion to speak. He thought of Earth, of the rebuild that awaited them, and he thought of Briggs, of the countless others who had laid down their lives for a cause greater than themselves. The years after the Battle of Draconis Prime were a blur of activity. Sleep was a luxury I couldn't afford, as I threw myself into the monumental task of rebuilding Earth's shattered fleet.
Late nights spent poring over schematics and supply chains left me bleary-eyed and exhausted. But I couldn't stop. Too much was riding on our success. The Draconis, true to their word, proved invaluable allies. Transports bearing their advanced technology and resources arrived daily, providing the raw materials we so desperately needed. I worked hand-in-hand -hand with their engineers, marvelling at the elegance of their designs as we collaborated on new ships and weapons. But even as we made progress, I could feel the undercurrents of tension rippling through the galaxy. The scars of the war were still raw, and not everyone was happy with the new balance of power. I saw it in the sidelong glances and whispered conversations at diplomatic functions, the barely concealed resentment in the eyes of certain council members as they watched humanity's star rise. It all came to a head when I uncovered the truth about the Void Swarm. Late one night, hunched over a glowing data pad in my quarters, I stumbled across the encrypted file buried deep within the council's archives. What I found made my blood run cold. The swarm wasn't a relic of some long-forgotten race. It was a weapon, created by a shadowy cabal within the Council itself. They called themselves the Shadow Council, and they had been pulling the strings of galactic events for centuries, orchestrating wars and suppressing any who threatened their power. I leaned back in my chair, my mind reeling. The Void Swarm, the war, all the death and destruction. It had all been part of their plan, a way to wipe out any race that dared challenge their authority. I knew then that the fight was far from over. The Battle of Draconis Prime had been just the beginning. If the Shadow Council wasn't stopped, the cycle of war and manipulation would continue until there was nothing left but ash and ruin. I called in every favor, rallied every ally I had made over the years. The Draconis were the first to answer their ships forming an honor guard around our growing fleet. Other races, those who had seen the truth of the Council's corruption, soon followed. Together, we launched a series of daring raids and covert operations, striking at the heart of the Shadow Council's power. We hit their supply lines, exposed their agents, slowly unraveling the web of influence they had spun across the galaxy. But each victory came with a cost. Too many friends. Too many brave souls lost in the fight. I still remember the day Primus fell, throwing himself in front of a Shadow Council assassin's blade meant for me. He died in my arms, his blood mingling with my tears as I begged him to stay with me. In the end, we won. The Shadow Council was defeated, their leaders brought to justice before the assembled races of the galaxy, but as I stood in the great hall of the Galactic Council, Watching as a new generation of leaders took their seats, I couldn't help but feel the weight of all we had lost. The galaxy had changed, the old alliances and power structures lying in ruins. We had won the war, but the scars it left behind would take generations to heal. I looked out at the sea of faces, Draconis and human, and a hundred other races, and I saw the same weariness, the same grief that I felt in my own heart, that I felt. But I also saw hope. I saw it in the eyes of the young, the idealists who had taken up the mantle of leadership. They believed in a better future, a galaxy free from the cycle of war and oppression. And as I watched them, I felt a flicker of that same hope kindle in my own chest. We had fought so hard, sacrificed so much to reach this moment. The brave soldiers of the human fleet, the steadfast warriors of the Draconis, the countless unsung heroes who had given their lives in the shadows. Their sacrifice had to mean something. I looked out at the stars, at the infinite possibilities that lay before us, and I made a silent vow. I would spend the rest of my days fighting to make their dream a reality, a galaxy of peace, of unity, of hope. It would be my legacy, and the legacy of all those who had fallen. The road ahead would be long and hard, the scars of the past not easily erased, but as I stood there, surrounded by the glimmering lights of a thousand worlds, I knew one thing for certain. The future was worth fighting for, and fight for it we would until our last breath and beyond. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, 
I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.